Well, here we are with Roger Neighbor talking about the legendary rhythm of blues cruise. Roger, you've been the captain of the crew for so many years, but 42 years? Well, I did my first one, not 42, but uh, Leo, I did my first one in 1992. Uh -huh. And uh, we did seven in the 90s, and then this is our 31st since Y2K. What a good time. Everybody loves the cruise, don't they, Roger? Seems to me. You know, How about you? Do you still love it? I still love the cruise, yes. Uh -huh. you know, uh, I run with a pretty small staff. You know, these cabins are expensive for us to house our staff in. And so, um, and all the bands that we have, you know, there's 25 bands on board. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm working pretty much 16 hours a day. But, you know, it's, it's fun work for me. The, the crowd's loving it. They, they're, I'm getting congratulated all day long. You know, I get my soul gets fed by you cruisers that come enjoy all the music too. Well, the legendary rhythm and blues cruise is a wonderful event, but you were the head of the Grand Emporium before, weren't you? Yes. Uh, I had the Grand Emporium nightclub in Kansas City for uh, 19 years. I promoted started promoting blues in 1979, so I'm in my 40th year as a blues music promoter. And you learned a lot, I'm sure. Along the way, I, <laughs> I learned by mistakes. Uh -huh. I wasn't schooled in this business at all. I'm self-taught. Um, and just just had to stay focused. And uh, the great Bobby Blueland once told me, he said, Roger, never stop promoting the blues. We need you. And you've promoted a lot of great people. Little Milton, Johnny Winter. Uh, you played, you brought people here that we don't know about and we take it out to the world and tell everybody about these people that we've seen here. Like the Reverend Peyton, I've never seen him before. Yeah, he's out of Ohio uh, or Indiana, so that mid, mid, east, midwest region. And he goes through Colorado quite often, but uh, I don't know how often he makes it to the Pacific Northwest. How do you find the acts? Well, when I had the Grand Emporium, Leo, it was seven, you know, six and seven days a week of live music, so I was really more in tune, or all the agents were in tune with me on a, on a weekly to monthly basis, and now that I'm only doing two of these voyages a year, uh, I'm not quite, like, zoned in like I was, mm -hmm. however, we have a good reputation with, with the uh, agents and the musicians um, and the managers. We pay our acts well. Um, we know that they have a hard time out there on the road, and so we pay, we pay them what we feel is what they're worth is often more than they're worth. Um, where, you know, when you're in a nightclub and you're booking for 200 to 300 people, you try to get the acts as low as you can. But here on this cruise, I'm, uh, I think the word is out among the agents that know that we pay them probably better than anybody else does. Um, I mean, we have a high ticket price, so um, so we, we, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and, and I've been doing it for the musicians. I've started promoting for the musicians, for my community, and that's kind of still where I'm at. We're talking to Roger Neighbor, the legendary rhythm and blues cruise number 31. You were a DJ one time, weren't you? I had a radio show in Kansas City, a uh, public radio. Uh -huh. um, that I hosted on Friday afternoons. Um, well, you try. You know, a lot of people don't use your, your my, my nightclub was on Main Street in Kansas City. And, and I'm a city guy. I'm, I don't live in the suburbs or the country. I live in the city. And so my the name of my radio show was the Main Street Mojo Show. Excellent name. Um, <laughs> and then I co-hosted on, on an urban station um, every Monday at noon with the urban DJ and we did a blues program. So uh, so I was involved in that community as well. Um, and that's why the blues crews have such a diverse uh, array of blues music. Well, you, you support local radio, commercial radio, not a public radio, Sirius XM radio. You've done a great job of keeping radio alive. And we appreciate that. Well, you've been doing radio a long time. Twenty-three years now. Oh, that's that's great. You know, I love it. It makes me feel happy. And whenever I think about going to the blues cruise, I think about the song by Rick Estrin. I met her on the blues cruise. <laughs>
<laughs> and that's also a video, so they can find that out there on YouTube. Uh -huh. Rick Astor and I met her on the Blues Cruise, and it's a hilarious video. We shot it on one of the ships, uh -huh. uh, just like that. It's like they came to me and they said, "Hey, we want to, we want to record the song," uh, and he let me listen to it, and uh, so then they went on his alligator release. Um, and then he shot a video, and um, I, I believe Bruce Ziegler didn't think that I would go along with the shenanigans that were in that movie. Uh -huh. But, you know, hey, we do this for fun, we do this because going on this cruise makes us feel like we're 19 years old again. And so, uh -huh. uh, if we can't laugh at ourselves and have fun with ourselves, if we're too serious, you know, it wouldn't be wouldn't really be the blues. That's true. Yeah. And people enjoy coming in here, like you had a Tab and Wild do a, a charity fundraiser for his wetlands yeah. charity with a bingo, or bingo. Yeah. <laughs> funny guy. Yeah. He is a funny guy. He's a, he's can be a stand-up comedian uh, at times, and I think he's done some comedy down in Louisiana in some of the comedy shops when he was getting started. Uh, he's also a drummer, so he's playing drums on this particular cruise with a couple of the acts that are on his record company, mm -hmm. you know, the label that he has. So, um, Tab's got a variety of talents, and uh, including the fact that he stays up until 6 in the morning almost every night. Uh, I saw him this morning at 5 o'clock on the uh, crow's oh, nest. Oh, you did? I got up and I went followed him around, went back to the back deck, saw the sunrise, then we had bacon. <laughs> that was hilarious. Did some jello shots. Uh, what a good time. Did you get any sleep last night? Yeah, I slept from 12 to 5 and jumped up and ran out and filmed oh, everything. Okay, so you yeah. were there at the sunrise party. I have tried to stay up all night. Do you do it? Um, I was up until 4 last night and went to bed because I, I had meetings uh -huh. typically every morning at, at 9 and 9.30. So so I've, I have to slow down and get my rest. And you have a lot of problems you have to take care of. A lot of situations arise. There's issues that, that arise when you figure out five stages, 25 bands, and 2,000 passengers with 1,000 cabins. Then um, there are issues that come up, and then we have to uh, discuss our loadout, uh, which is a which is a barnstorming kind of load and load of the crane and, and that type of thing. Wow! But uh, the Union Stevedores <coughs> off the pier, excuse me. Uh, so, well, Roger, what are some of the highlights for you? Name a couple off that you've liked on the legendary rhythm and blues groups. Well, highlights for me, excuse me, are the uh, being able to bring some of these legends to the ship, uh, and a lot of people have never seen them before, first time. Uh, you know, from say like Ed and James uh, to Bobby Bland, and then bringing people. To, uh, together, like Johnny and Edgar Winter, I brought together for the first time in 30 years. Um, An amazing show. Yeah. Mickey Thomas and Elvin Bishop are reunited. Um, so I, we did some reuniting of, of, of people from the past when they've gone their separate ways, uh, and, the, and the crowd really likes that. The, um, the camaraderie of the musicians where they, last night, uh, David Hildalgo from Los Lobos, and uh, G Love and Special Sauce, his rhythm section, they got together and they wanted to do the show. Don't even put it in the daily sheet, don't put it in the schedule. We just want this to be an underground event. And then they pulled in other musicians. Uh, Billy Branch came and Nick Schneblin, and, uh, and then G Love got up as well, Mitch Woods. So they turned it into like their own little mini jam session, mm -hmm. uh, unannounced. And, and those type of things are a lot of fun for us. And like you said, the bingo, right now G Love is, is doing a culinary thing. Uh, he's got some hot sauce. Um, <laughs> so, hot stuff. So he's, he's got the head chef up there uh -huh. um, in the BB King Blues Club Lounge. And, and uh, just, just the overall event, you know, it's, um, I haven't had anybody complain about the music at all. They shouldn't. They seem the best of the best. And one thing I love is when a, a artist does a, his regular set and then they jam, they kind of wake up and they say, oh, we can play different stuff and, and with other people. 
Right. They That's like, wonderful. They, they like playing songs outside of their set list or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we encourage them not to play the same set list because they perform three or four times during the course of the week. And so it's stated in our, in our offer sheet for them to vary their, their shows. Oh. And so the, when the people come to the show, they might hear some of the same songs. They're not going to hear all of the same songs. Because uh -huh. you know, most of these bands now have a festival uh, set list mm -hmm. that they think is the best music that they do to get the crowd up and motivated in front of a large crowd. Um, and actually, the best place to see these bands are inside intimate clubs. That's really where you get the most energy out of these bands. And it, there is energy here. Mm -hmm. The two things, two artists I want to talk about is Taj Mahal and Tommy Castro. They've been on almost every cruise, haven't they? Yeah, uh, Taj hasn't been on all the ones on the left coast here uh, when the viewers had smaller ships. Um, but uh, he has been recently. Uh, and we called him our spiritual leader um, back in the 1990s when Taj was coming in from Hawaii. He really caught the spirit of the blues cruise. Sometimes would be the first person on the dance floor. Um, she no longer does, but but he's he's very alert. He's, he's his mind is sharp. He's quick with the wit on stage. Uh, when we had the Taj bow. Uh, group last year, Kepo and Taj Mahal, uh, he constantly had fun ad lib between the songs. Uh, Tommy Castro, on the other hand, uh, has proven to be a crowd pleaser, and he's also been a team player with us. He's, he came up with the concept of having the legendary Rhythm of Blues review back in 2005 or six, uh, and so we came up with a game plan for the musicians that were performing. Magic Dick from the former Jake Isles band was our harmonica player. And Deanna Bogart, a uh, piano player off the East Coast, now West Coast, but uh, she's a very versatile pianist uh, between blues and jazz. The girl in the band. Yeah, the girl in the band. <laughs> and Ronnie Baker Brooks, who's uh, a great entertainer, uh, pretty much a closer when it comes to uh, entertaining on stage, so he would close out the legendary Rhythm Blues review. Um, and so we, when Tommy came up with that concept, and we, we got it together and we discussed it every year whether we're gonna, who we're going to have in the, in the review. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, he does uh, stage announcements at different vessels around the country about the cruise. He, he calls us about doing a, a fundraiser raffling off a cabin and that type of thing. So uh, Tommy keeps us in his mind uh, year round where many of the other artists they're just concerned about themselves. So, and you've also got CDs out. Command Performance is one of them. Yeah. That's a great one. I love that one because you get the feeling of the blues groups. Right. That's a good thing that you've done. Right. It's a so, wonderful thing. Well Leo has been a tremendous uh, run with our cruises and uh, this one was sold out February is sold out for pre-booking uh, next October through this cruise. We may have to cut off pre-books. We're already pre-booking January 2020. So. Wow. Well, Roger, thank you for all the hard work. You're a, an amazing well, man. Well, Leo, thanks for all your support, too. Oh, my your, pleasure. Your dedication, dedication to the Blues with your radio programming. Um, we're easy to find on the Internet as well. It's bluescruise.com. What a great uh, website. Yeah. <laughs> Bluescruise.com. Roger Neighbor here, the captain of the legendary Rhythm of Blues Cruise, here the 31st, 32nd in February, and the next one's in October after that. Yeah, October 2019. Leo's Blues Land. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Leo. <laughs>